What is up guys and welcome to the Escape from Tarkov Beginner's Guide, brand new to the wipe. This video and videos will be for people that are first time players predominantly. What I want to do is just help you understand Escape from Tarkov because this game is one of the most intricate games when it comes to knowing certain things, whether it be ammo, just map knowledge, uh, your quest lines, what items you need, how you're going to stash your items, how are you going to loot. And I wanted to help people that are brand new to the game because I love this game. I've played this game ever since it has come out. I was playing on American servers when it first came out because there were no Oceania servers. So I do love Tarkov. I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to get straight into it. And I did buy a brand new account just to help you guys like, subscribe, comment if you have any other questions. And I'll mostly do these videos in parts so it helps you guys. Oh, and also twitch.tv forward slash masked wolf if you want to come in. Check me out on the stream. I am playing Escape from Tarkov only at the moment. Absolutely love this game. Mayday, 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 mayday! So as soon as you come into the game, you're going to get prompted with your uh, language choice. For me, as you can obviously tell English, you're going to choose your nickname, one bullet, no hit. Now, this is something that is completely up to you. You're going to have the choice of going with a USEC or bear. The difference is in the weapons you get, your starting weapons, but also on the map called Lighthouse, which you will venture to later throughout your wipe, there's raiders, which are kind of like cracked AI, and they will actually be more aggressive towards the bear unit. However, this wipe with some buffs, even though to the USEC uh, starting weapons, I prefer bear just because I love my 7.62 guns. I love my AK and uh, for me, I'll be going bear, but it is completely up to you guys. It doesn't like make a huge amount of difference. I'm just going to go with whatever we're going to choose here. You can choose your voice lines the way your guy looks, but uh, we're going to get straight into it. And essentially from here, once your character is created, this is where your journey begins. Now, the hideout is something you should focus on. Uh, just because I would say later on when the game fully releases, whenever that may be, the hideout will be essential. But for now, let's not get into the hideout if you're a brand new player. Okay, just sit back. Let's go straight into what the most important part of starting your escape from Tarkov uh, journey is. And that's going to the trading section. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because when you first start every single wipe, your items will be silhouetted and you need to examine those. You can simply examine by right clicking and clicking examine or for me and most people, you use your middle mouse button. I'm gonna go and do this. The reason why we do this is because every time you examine an item that you haven't examined before, it gives you experience, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner. This experience will get you to level two. Now there are two maps that you should be starting with in Escape from Tarkov, that is customs and woods. Now the reason why I examine to level two is because it will give me a quest line to do with woods. Now generally for myself and someone that does understand Tarkov and the maps and has knowledge around them for, for my most part, I will always start with woods and customs and especially woods because you can get good salewas if you spawn at a place called the Uset camp but for now let's just examine these items let's get to level two and i'll see you guys soon okay so you can see here that i've got level two even though i haven't examined every single item that is okay the other reason we want to try and examine everything is because in raid if we find things the more that we need to examine in a raid the more time we're wasting let's say we do kill a player if we have to examine everything it, that can like actually cost us possibly dying in raid also if you don't examine a gun's like magazine or the bullets sometimes you actually can't reload or reload the magazine because it hasn't been examined however we have done what we've set out to do we are now level two as you can see uh, in close to the top right hand corner so what i'm going to do next is very simple i'm going to be going into uh trading i'm going to go to each of my traders that can give me a quest and i'm going to accept those quests now before we do any of that what i highly suggest you do is you go escape from tarkov you go to your pmc you click on either customs or woods now for me i would recommend woods even though it is a bit more pvp heavy 
there are more points of interest for you to learn the map. And you need to be careful here as well that there is uh, 24 hour clocks. So if I do go into 23, I am going in at 11 p.m. at night. You don't want to really do that, especially when you're trying to learn a map. But I'm going to go next and I'm going to enable practice mode for this raid. I can change some settings with the conditions. I make sure that there's, there's no scavs, uh, but basically I would have these settings as having scavs as well. Scavs are basically the AI, the NPCs in this game or the, the AI that will shoot back at you if you are a PMC and you do get spotted by them. So watch out. The reason why I would keep AI on is because it's going to give you an idea of locations as where they may be based, even that I'm, I'm going to go uh, through it with you. I would highly suggest doing an offline practice raid before you get into a real raid, whether it's with your scab or your uh, PMC, which is uh, your actually player controlled character. Now, if I was brand new to the game, I would basically be going in very, very, very light. Even at the start, I will do that or straight off a wipe. I'm going to go in with the AK here with the PS ammo. I want to basically show you guys or advise that you should go in with the least amount of gear as possible. There's a great Twitch streamer called Glorious. He says all the time, don't go in with headsets. Don't go in with armor. Don't go in with a helmet. You're going to get one tap to the head anyway if you get hit in the head. Go in with your backpack, go in with a pistol and try and loot as much as you can. Stay away from everything. Kill your scavs, which is a part of the quest and extract. Okay. What I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to go into an offline raid. In that offline raid, we're going to discuss the points of interest. I kind of want to do it in this video because I think it's important before you go into a raid and we can go from there for for this maybe i will uh set ai amount to none so what we're doing now is we're deploying straight into customs um which is one of the maps uh that you will be playing heavily during your early wipe scenario and i'm just going to be pointing out some of the the big landmarks to to learn the map and how your spawns and extracts will work and where some of them are based just to give you a small understanding of the map so you're not you're not thrown into the deep when you spawn in for your first pmc or scav raid a lot of this game uh, whether you like it or not, will be you going to YouTube and uh, YouTube and being like, okay, where's this extract? This is the extract I have. I want to show you straight away how it's going to look, how it's going to feel, where you're going to be. Now, there's two ways you can spawn in this game. One is uh, basically we call this, this is sort of a mid spawn. I, my, my extracts will be this way, uh, but you can spawn uh, what's called around big red this is m the main bridge that takes you from big red which we'll see when we go over there uh and this is what i call so sort of like the main part of the map a lot of the times if you spawn at big red or around big red a lot of people are a bit of moaning a, a bit because it's not the greatest of spawns you have to cross the water which is very open um and it doesn't really offer a huge amount of loot uh, you'll find spawns around here. This is a train track that goes right along. But what we're going to see here is uh, big red as soon as we come up to this train. Again, this is what I like to call main bridge. And you can actually go under this bridge. But I want to show you this map uh, from the point of view coming in from big red. Okay. So this is big red right here. It's a big red warehouse. You can spawn in the warehouse. You can spawn around the warehouse. You want to be wary of scavs throughout this area as well, and definitely players. Now, it is up to you how you want to loot, where you want to loot. You generally will find loot in all buildings you can go inside, like these little blue shacks. But essentially, you can understand now why this is called Big Red. If you spawn around Big Red, play it safe, play it slow, but ideally, you're wanting to get to the grass where the water is and run across the map. Uh, it can be quite dangerous. You want to pay a lot of attention to this area here where the train track is. There can be a lot of people that unfortunately like to camp around here and watch these crossovers. Now you have uh, three crossovers on this water. 
the one that I showed you that we first came across, your right side crossover and your middle crossover. Sometimes, and a lot of the times, uh, especially later in wipe, there will be players that camp this bridge and watch these two because it is essentially a very free kill for them, especially if, if they have the right gun and the right equipment. Um, remember, Big Red is here. This is Trailer Park, which is on the right side of Big Red. But just for now, let's focus on the Big Red Warehouse. If you spawn there, you're going to have to come across this way. You can go under that bridge there and wrap around, but essentially you're either choosing to come down here, down the middle, or across on the other side, or the bridge. Something I don't do a lot, um, but it's completely up to you. So there is four ways to get across. I just don't like doing the bridge because then I'm open to two, uh, to multiple angles. Whereas if I come here, I'm really open to the bridge behind me and that's about it. But if I go on the, on the bridge, I'm open to left, I'm open to there, I'm open to here, I'm open to back there. And so it just opens up my angles even though there are cars and stuff. So essentially what you're gonna be doing um, and, I, and this is generally the route I would say to come, uh, it, unless you spawned where I spawned and you run across because that takes you to a very, uh, crazy hotspot area called dorms, which I'll show you. But essentially this is what I call, uh, like crack house broken wall. This building here is called crack house. Early wipe, a lot of people come here because it has extremely good loot or it can have extremely good loot. I call this crack house broken wall because there is another broken wall there and sometimes it, it can get quite confusing. Uh, again, crack house, some buses there. There are things you can use to really make your communications a bit better. That massive building opposite from crack house is called fortress. Bosses can spawn there. Again, that building has extremely, extremely good loot as well. Can be really good for first uh, wipe and a lot of people will loot here and there. This to me is one of the heaviest choke points uh, in the map. You really need to be careful, especially around here. A lot of people will come through, come down through this broken wall. They want to see crack, get crack house loot. A lot of people will come through here and they come to this point here. Now this point takes you to construction or fortress. You can also go through around this building and through, which I'll show you, but you need to be super, 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 super careful here. This is a, a PVP area. Uh, this has a lot of scavs around here as well. So you wanna be careful. Generally what I will do in my raids is, is one of two things. Unless I spawn over there, I'm doing quests in dorms. I will come through broken wall if I don't have crack house spawn, which means I've spawned and I'm the closest to crack house building to loot. I will literally abandon this area and just come through here. I'll make sure I don't see anyone at the top of fortress. And I like to hug walls a lot. This is because it closes off angles for me, knowing that I don't have anyone that can hit me from the back here. Really important. Two other things you really need to be wary of and be checking all the time. On this silo here, this massive uh, white cylinder building silo, there can be a scav sniper up there. He can shoot very far, he will hit you, he can easily kill you. So if you see someone walking up there, just be very mindful. You can try and kill him or you can try and avoid him by you know, being behind good cover, taking smart routes. Another sniper can also spawn on the top of this building uh, here. So you need to be very careful, guys. I'm not going to show you inside a fortress or anything like that. I, I'm just giving you an exterior POI. Now, as I said, my route will either be, I come through crack house broken wall. I either clear, I clear this building because you can actually go in there from the front side. I'll wrap here. And this takes us to construction. And the reason why I do this, and I would never really sprint across that. I never really sprint across heavy metal like that. But that's construction, okay? Now, two things I can do. One, I can just come through here. And this is kind of like an add-on of construction. 
that's the construction building here. This is another construction. I will never, I will never cross over um, unless I see or have something happening close to me. But essentially, I'm, cl I'm clearing the high ground and I'm just using my walls and cover and I'll come around here. <laughs> essentially, customs has three aisles. Just think of it as three lanes. I've got one lane here that you can see. So essentially in this line, crack house broken wall. That takes me this way. I've got the middle lane with the middle road. That takes me all the way through the middle of the map. And then I have dorms, which is a hot spot. And all the way through the forest, which can be a good route to take. I'm going to show you what dorms is because it is a very, very PvP big area. A lot of quests need to be done in dorms. There can be a lot of loot there. So essentially, this is what I like to call the middle lane of the map. Here and here. This is just the main road. This main road connects with that bridge that I said some people can. Now, if you if you can remember where we spawned at the start of this offline raid, you'll uh, see that if I ran straight down, it would have taken me to dorms. And it's actually one of the good spawns for dorms because I'd be the closest to the two-story building. But there are two buildings for dorms, guys. And I know this is a lot of information, but I just want to let you understand where the PvP could happen, where you need to be careful, and uh, essentially how you're going to uh, survive. This is three-story dorms. One, two, three levels you can see, and this is two-story. A lot of PvP is going to happen in here, guys. You're going to hear a lot of stuff happen over your, over your raids. Be very careful. Uh, you can run along the fence line, but there is an extract behind this building where you have to pay 5,000 rubles to get a car extract. I'm really... I don't want to go into the extracts too much. I think you should look that up yourself. Also, another really good uh, path to go is if you do spawn this way, you can come right through here. You can use this wall as a guide and cover. And it'll let you run straight through the map. Remember, now where we are is back at that second construction building that we were in. This is bus depot. Not much really happens here. There's not a lot of loot. Sometimes you will see a, see a scab. Just be prepared for that. And now we're coming into sort of the real factory side of customs. Uh, we're coming into <clears throat> new gas station. Uh, let me go to this side for you. So this is new gas station. Remember, uh, this is the second construction building. This is the silo where the scav sniper can spawn. You want to be really, really careful here because there will be either a lot of scavs at new gas. Uh, sometimes even the boss can spawn there, uh, which you want to be careful of. And essentially, please remember this, you generally do not want to be going straight this way. It's very hard to get over this. So you're either choosing to go through factory side, um, or you're going through sort of wood side. Uh, it's completely up to you. I prefer factory side because there is a lot of cover, um, but that is, you know, completely your decision. You can loot in there, new gas station. We've got dorms behind us, remember, on the map. And I'm just going to show you a bit of the, the wooden side. To look at your extractions, you can press double zero. That'll bring up your extractions and how long is left in the raid. You can see now we have 28 minutes left in the raid. And uh, these are my extractions. This helps a lot when you are looking at maps. And you are looking at extraction videos because you can see what extractions you have up. Now, what do the question marks mean? The question marks essentially mean these are extracts on the map, but they may not or may be open this raid. The only way you can find out whether they are open, one, whether someone else used it before you and then you can't use it again, or two, uh, you go to that extract and see if it's available or not. If it's not available, you won't be able to extract from there. For example, Dorms VX is the dorms building that I showed you behind in the woods that I said there is a car extract there. 
if someone took that, this would appear red, both the letters and the question marks, and it would say, someone has used it, it is now unavailable for you to use, you cannot use that extract. Again, you press double, Z, uh, double O on your uh, keyboard for that. Three massive tips for you guys also. If you are, are playing Escape from Tarkov, you need three massive keybinds. One is examine with your middle mouse button. Two is discard. I have it set as uh, a mouse click button, which I've now chucked my ammo on the ground, but that's okay. Uh, even though ammo is very important. And three is alt clicking. Alt clicking allows me to automatically put items or armor on. So I can go, I can basically, if I do get into a fight and I win, I can go, oh, discard, put that on, be very quick with my um, looting. Because you need to be quick in this game and you need to understand, you know, when you can loot, when you can't, and how, how much time you really have. <laughs> Now, there's just more woods over there. There are no extracts over there for PMCs. This is uh, <clears throat> a very, very heavy scav area. You want to be careful of this. But the good thing about it is, is, is if you did come down this fence line, which I would never recommend to a new player because all these scavs are basically going to be going boom, 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 trying to shoot you. Uh, and you will likely take a lot of hits or die. Uh... You can go through here, and this is the factory side of customs. A lot of information, a lot of maps, a lot of POIs. Uh, I just want you to see, oh, okay, I'm here. Oh, yeah, I remember that from the video. Yep, yeah, this helps me a lot. The reason why I'm running back is because I want to show you how it all connects. Because if I show you everything just by itself, and I don't show you where it connects to, then you're sort of going to be uh, confused. Scavs can be in this area. There also can be a scav on this roof as well. A sniper. Be careful of that. He will sit up on this roof here and walk along, along it. But you'll see where we are shortly. You can see over here, this is this, the two cylinder uh, silos where the scav sniper can spawn. You'll hear him pop off every game. Remember, you can go into every single warehouse, look for loot. You'll eventually find them and understand. And I recommend going to YouTube, looking at, like, the best looting guides for each map or certain maps. Maybe just starting off with customs. Another train track, but I'm going to show you where this connects to, and then it'll make a lot more sense. What we are looking at now, this is the fortress building. So you remember how we had crack house, fortress? Now this is where we are. Um... <clears throat> This is old gas station. This can be an extract for people that spawn on big red side. You'll see green smoke. And a lot of the times with some of the extract that have the question marks, maybe for, uh, they'll have some type of indicator or smoke to let you know that it is available. And if you don't see it, then it won't be available. But this is a route I come a lot. I will go through around fortress the way that I showed you. And I'll come through here. So there's Fortress there. And if you can remember, we were at the second construction building. We ran across and then we went across the road. But if I went right, this is where it takes me. Now you want to be super, super careful of this bit here. Because there is a sniper sign that I'm going to show you guys. And you can get shot by a sniper and li literally instantly one kill. So you're there is Crack House. Okay, crack house is there. You can choose to hug this wall all the way. And a lot of people do this because it's very safe. Because no one will ever be to your right. When you ever see a sign like this, it means, hey, if you go past this, you're going to get shot at from a sniper. So be very, very careful. Is that a dead... What the hell? Anyway, so you don't want to go past that sign. I never really loot. Oh, okay, so he's got a sniper. We're going to die. There we go. <laughs> I thought AIs were turned off. I thought AIs were turned off. Why is Scav Sniper still up? Oh my lord. I hope that gives you a great description and overview of customs. Now, instead of me going back to old gas station and showing you Fortress and where that sniper was, 
basically if i just kept going um around factory side there's two uh, x trucks around there and more warehouses and loot it that part is not over overly complicated so i'm glad that just happened don't worry in offline road uh, offline mode if you die you don't lose your loot so i'm not too worried there now after that what i would suggest to do is go into a scav scavs have a 30 minute cooldown this is basically saying uh what what is, what is a scav a scav is you coming in the game as a player ai unit you're like literally kind of taking over an ai unit you get to do whatever you want you can try and hunt players get loot and extract scavs will have different extracts compared to a pmc which is the main character player as i said you will have different extracts for the game and you will uh need to know those as well so it's completely up to you how you want to start this but i highly recommend that you start this with an offline raid and just get familiar of the settings of the movement a lot of movement changes have been made in uh escape from tarkov and that is something you need to get accustomed to now if you start in woods i I, for a brand new player, I would not say start in woods first. I'd say start second because there's landmines. It's a bunch of trees and you will get lost. I would say watch videos on it. Customs is easier to understand where you are because of the big buildings and the big indicators. Oh, okay. I'm at this broken wall. This is what he was talking about. Oh, there's a big red building. So there's more indicators in customs. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to say, okay, I've got some tasks. What do I need to do? Simply, you go character, you go tasks at the top, and it will show you all your tasks. So what are my first two tasks that I need to do? You will get much more. Once I do these quests, I can hand them in. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is when you find quest items, you need to extract with them. If you don't extract with them, if you don't survive that raid, you will not be able to put those through um as a quest item the alpha container is really important you get different containers depending on which edition you buy in the game but the alpha container is basically your way of a hundred percent guaranteeing that you cannot lose whatever is in there so if i find a really good key even a quest item like a flash drive uh, any quest item that is really important to me, I'll be putting it in this container. Now, as I said, very, very important to not go heavily geared in. And I'd possibly, honestly, be going in with just a pistol. If I die, I don't lose a lot from it. Now, early game, super, and super important that you use your alpha for your uh, medical needs. Now, a splint heals a fracture. An Esmarch heals a heavy bleed, and a bandage heals a light bleed. Now, when you go to heal in raid, you want to heal your bleeds first. I hope that makes sense, but you want to heal your bleeds first. You have seven parts of healing. You have your head, thorax, stomach, left arm, right arm, your right leg, and your left leg. Yeah, I really hope this explains and helps you for your start of your first raid and your start to Tarkov. I'm going to call that a part one here. And in part two, we're going to go into our first raid. I'm going to explain to you my pathing, my decision making, and try and loot well and get out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment. If you have any other questions around, you know, the brand new starting, I hope I've tried to be as informative and in detail as possible without, uh, you know, overcomplicating everything. That's part one for Escape from Tarkov for dummies, for beginners, for brand new players. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one. Much love.